Hello there and welcome to the final sorting algorithm of our series of three. This is the quick sort video and in this one what we're going to do is take you through how to run a recursive quick sort on some data in an array. So firstly, this part of the, of the video is just set, getting us set up, getting an array of elements ready to go. So if you know how to do that, you can skip on a little bit. I've got three different uh, objects in here. I've got a button, show array, which is BTN show array. I've got BTN quick sort over here and LST display. That's not a number one, that's an L. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to just double click um, this form and use the load event. I think I'm gonna create a global array. And there we go. And all of them are gonna be integers. So we're gonna do sort an array of integers. That's what we're gonna have a go at. And in my load function, all I'm gonna do is ask the user um, how many elements that they, they want. So I'm gonna use a input box for that, I think. And inside here, I'm gonna say, please input how many elements you require. There we are. And then what I'll do is after that's done, I'm gonna redimension the array, which is my array, and we're gonna specify how big that is now. So we're gonna redim it at the number the user specifies. Perfect. Now the next couple of things that I'm gonna do is I am going to then populate the list box with some numbers and populate the array with numbers as well. So firstly, I'm just gonna make sure that it's clear. Now when we load the form, the, the list should be clear anyway. I'm just being pedantic, I suppose. And then I'm gonna use the randomize, if I can spell it, randomize function. What that's gonna do is gonna shake up, sort of shuffle all the numbers ready for our random function to be used. And what I'll do is I'll use a for loop because it's a static preconditioned loop. For i equals zero to my array, dot length. Now we're going to need to minus one there because our array starts at zero. I'm going to say my array at the position of i. So starting at zero, moving all the way up to however long or large your array is, we're going to use math.floor. So that's a predefined function. And what it does is it will round your numbers down. And rnd is random, bracket, bracket, and we're gonna multiply that by 100. So we should get numbers between zero and 99. And then I'll just also, while that's happening, I'll add it to the list box at the same time. So lst items.add my array at the position of i. So take the element out of the array and just whack it into the list box. That displays it for us. Now, interestingly enough, what I'll do is I'll create a sub, call it display, so this is a procedure, and all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this, just adapt it slightly. So when we run the display, I wanna clear the list box, like that, and then I want us to not create random elements, I want us to populate with the current array, okay? So I just made a little procedure there, just adapted some code that will actually, when I call display, it'll just Show me what that looks like in the display itself. All right. Quickly test this, make sure that it does everything that we need it to. How many elements do you want? I'd like 10 elements, please. Click OK. And I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Mmm. Why do we have 11 elements? And the reason is because of this. I need to minus one from it because we're starting at zero. So let me just check that was the fix. These little bugs do creep in. I've got 10 elements in there and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Perfect. Yep, problem solved. All right, now let's move on to the quick sort then. Now, the quick sort is slightly more tricky than the bubble sort and insertion sort. And the reason why is because it's recursive. And what does recur recursive mean? It means a function that calls itself within itself until a base case or a terminating condition is met. 
So it co continually opens copies of itself until it reaches the terminating condition that will stop it. All right. So inside my quick sort, in order for it to be recursive, I'm going to write sub quick sort bracket bracket, and we're going to pass it in three parameters. Okay. The first one is the array itself. So you're going to pass in my array if I get my syntax right, and that's going to be of type integer. Then going to pass in index low, which is the lower end of my array. So that's the element position, the index position, starting at zero in the low end, going up to index high in the upper end as an integer. Voila. Okay. So three, three parameters are passed in there, the entire array, the low end and the high end of the array. So when I call this, when I click the button, it's going to be quick sort. I'm going to pass in my array. I'm going to pass it in zero because that's the low end, isn't it? Up to the high end, which is my array dot length. And what I'm going to need is a minus one because don't forget we start from zero. So th pr three parameters, the array itself, low end, high end. Job done. Now inside the quick sort, we're going to need something called the pivot point, which is the element selected to compare everything to. We're going to need a temporary swap variable. We're going to need a temporary low variable. We're going to need a temporary high variable. And they are all of type integer. So four parameters in total. Now look what happens here. I'm going to set temp low to equal the position of index low. And I'm going to set temp high, so the temporary high variable, to equal the same as the index high variable. And the reason why we do that is because we don't want to change these index lows and index highs. We need them to remain the same. But these temp low and temp highs, they're going to move continuously through the program. Then we've got the pivot. So what we do with the pivot point is we say my array at the position of index low plus index high divided by two. And I'll just check that, make sure the brackets are right, because that is that plus that one divided by that one. Yeah, I think that's right. If you don't get that right, Bodmas will come and get you. Three, yeah, okay. So that one and that one are inside that one. The divided by two is inside that one. That one's for the array, and that one's for the overall. Okay, fine. We'll test that later, and it'll probably be, be wrong, and it'll shout at me. Now then, what we need to do is we need to encase this in a while loop. So we say while temp low is less than or equal to temp high. Okay, so think about that. While the low value is less than or equal to the high value, that means that the pointers on either sides of the array haven't touched yet. And that's good. So that means keep going. Now there's three conditions inside here that you need to remember for your exam. Increment. decrement and swap okay three conditions that happen inside the quick sort the first condition is when the element that we're looking at on the left hand side of the array is less than the pivot point if the element on the left hand side of the pivot point is less than the pivot point leave it there you don't need to swap it so what we're going to say is we're going to say while my array at the position of temp low. So while the array position or the, the element on the left hand side is less than the pivot point and temp low, the pointer itself, the integer pointer is less than index high. So while it's still lower than the highest element, 
Let's, let's actually increment the pointer. So I said to you, leave it there. In order to leave it there, we just increment the pointer up one in the array and leave the number alone. Alternatively, if the pivot point itself is less than whatever's on the right hand side of the array, and the temp pre high variable is greater than the index low variable, then we, that means that the number on the right hand side is greater than the pivot point. Okay, it's a bigger number than the pivot element. So we leave it on the right hand side and we decrement the pointer down by one. Index temp low, temp low minus one. Decrement the pointer down. So two conditions, increment the pointer up and we leave the number alone. Decrement the pointer down, we leave it alone. The last condition is if the, the, low, the low index pointer is less than or equal to the high index pointer, then what we do is we make a swap. So we swap the two numbers over. So the last condition means that the number on the left hand side is less than is greater than the pivot and the number on the right hand side is less than the pivot. So we need to just swap them both straight over. And to do this, we do something very similar to a bubble sort. So what we do is we copy in our number into the temporary swap variable from the low end. So now the low element is copied into the swap variable and that means the low element itself can receive the high element from the other end of the array. Then the high element that you've just copied into there is given the value of the swap variable. That is almost identical to our bubble sort. The temporary variable gets the low element the low element gets overwritten with the high element. The high element gets overwritten with the temporary element. So that's our straight swap. And once you've made the straight swap, then you must increment and decrement the pointers, both of them this time. So the low element on the left-hand side gets incremented by one. The high element on the right-hand side gets decremented by one. And I know it must be extremely confusing. What, you, what I would do is I would sit there with a whiteboard, a piece of paper. I'd have my elements in front of me. I'd have my array in front of me. I'd get my pencil on my whiteboard pen. And I would, be, I would be writing these pointers above the array elements. And I would be moving them around based on the conditions. Because you cannot understand this. Or I, ca I couldn't understand this until I visualized it. Until I actually looked at it. So once we've done those three conditions, the next bit is to do this. So I'm going to write this out first and then I'm going to explain it with a diagram because it is very difficult. It's a lot of information to take in. I'll say quick sort, pass it in, my array. Index low is passed and temp high passed. So I'll explain to you what I'm doing in just a second. Once I've written this out, I've got another condition here and where the condition states that if the temp low is less than index high, then quick sort my array temp low and index high. Okay, let me explain. So two conditions there. Here is my pivot array. Now just to be awkward, I've made it of 11 in total. Get rid of that. 
So I've got 11 elements in here. Now my pivot point is selected by taking zero, adding it to 11, working out the sum of that and dividing it by two, okay? So that's 5.5 .5 and we round down because using the floor function. So five is the pivot point, okay? Element five, should I say. What happens next is when you move all of the numbers to the left-hand side if they're small in the pivot or right-hand side if they're higher than the pivot, once that happens and you get to the end of shuffling around, then what you do is you break down into subarrays. But in actual fact, don't forget that in our quick, quick sort procedure call, we have three elements, don't we? So three parameters, should I say. We have my array, which is the entire array from zero to 11. We have the low end and the high end. Okay, the low end in this example is zero. The high end is 11. Now when we call this, we recursively call the sort procedure or function again and we pass it different elements. So although we give it the same array, we give it different starting and end points. So in this case, this would be zero and up to four for the low end. So this, this part of the array. And the higher end, which is this part of the array, would be six to 11. Okay, and as you can see, this is the pivot minus one. And this is the pivot plus one. You could write that in there instead of hard coding the numbers. But think about it. Because the low end is going to be added to the upper end. Zero plus four is four divided by two is two. Okay, so this is going to be the new pivot point for the lower end of the array. And then on this side, you've got six plus 11. Yep, sorry, six plus 11, which is 17. And that gives us 8.5. Drop that off, which means this is going to be the new pivot point. And then you work out and you move all the numbers to the left of this and all the numbers to the right of this. And then you do this again. And this time you pass it the smaller array element. So you pass it this one, zero plus one, which is equal to one divided by two, etc. And then you go this side. So this is six plus the seven. This is nine plus the 11. So you're doing this end and this end, this end and this end. So you're passing in the same array over and over and over and over again. But you're just changing the elements, which makes the algorithm think that it's working on a different part of the array every time. And that's why it's recursive, because all of these are all different copies of the array. And that's what our code is doing down here. It's passing in different elements for the lower end and the upper end of our array. And then all I'm gonna do, just at the end, I'm just gonna call that display function and see what happens. So let's have a look. When we run this, what do we get? 10 elements in here. So 10 elements, there they are. Okay, duplicates, not this time. Quick sort. And that didn't work, I've just broke my code. Um, I'm looking here, oh, there we go. There's the error. To decrement, we go from the high points, not the low points, rookie mistake. So you change that, that's, that's line 47 in my code. If you change that to temp high, we'll give this another run. See what happens this time. 10 elements in there, hopefully it doesn't break this time. There's some elements for us. Quick sort and it will, ooh, look at that. 26, 26, 35, 76, 20. That looks sorted to me. Perfect. And that's our quick sort. Lots and lots of information in there. Once you've got the code, please dry run the algorithm. Repetition and going over this, it's a very complex thing. Many steps involved. It takes time, so please be patient and stick with it. You will get it in the end. If you need help, you know where I am. Keep trying. You will get there.